Recently, we hit 10,000 subscribers, so I made your guys' workshop ideas in Overwatch. The first half of the video are one-off changes, while the second half will focus on new game modes. Like and subscribe, and I hope you all enjoy. Oh yeah, and there'll be a code on screen for all the game modes if you want to try them out. The first suggestion is from Frogs Are Great Wizards with Make Torpion Wall Climb and Double Jump. So we got the double jump going on. If I press space twice, he starts double jumping. But then also if I go to a wall, he starts wall climbing it. It's a little slow and a little gimmicky, but Torbjörn can now double jump and wall climb. So feel free to wall climb wherever you want. You can just kind of slide around. Kind of cool. Kind of awesome. Next up from Durgen Bakkenfish. Make Torbjörn's turret shoot far ultimate instead of normal bullets. So we got a bunch of soldiers right here. They're trying to kill me. But uh, I got a turret that apparently misses, but it shoots far rockets. You can't really tell. Let me try that again. So this time I'll try the placement a little bit better. So if I do it there, there we go. <laughs> it shoots rockets. Now, unfortunately, I have to make it so he has to look straight down in order to track where the turret's going. But once it gets off cooldown, it does indeed shoot far rockets to the nearest person. So just feel free to buff your turret down and it will just shoot the soldiers. Next up from jcam302, Ryan, Brig, and Torp's hammer have unlimited range. So I of course always thought that Reinhardt needed more range, so now when Reinhardt swings, he just kind of kills everything. This does not work through walls, even though it's giving me hit markers, it's not working. You'll see that I won't kill the soldier. Well, if he comes in here, I will. Also, as you can see, it also works with Brigitte. She also has unlimited range. And if we go back to Torbjorn, he also has an unlimited range with his hammer. From Super Saiyan Chez with a very fitting answer. Genji has a giant sword. You know, like the animes? One of those massive swords? Well, I can't make Genji's sword massive, but... I can make him massive, so... <laughs> yeah. It basically just makes him massive. He has such a large hitbox afterwards, but he also has a large sword hitbox, so he can just swing from so far away. I wish I could just make it so his sword was big. I tried making a Genji invisible, but it didn't work. It is your massive sword for you. It's not perfect, but it's kind of cool. From Ben Coke, Fall damage. I'm sure you guys all wanted fall damage in Overwatch. If I jump, I don't take fall damage. But if I fall off something, I take fall damage. For some characters, fall damage is actually terrible for them. While others, on the other hand, it's amazing for them. <laughs> so yeah, some characters can really exploit it like Sigma, who basically just insta-kills anyone. While characters like Doomfist will just constantly take fall damage. From Dragon X, Sleep Dart now injects random chemicals. So when you sleep someone, there is five different effects that it can do. The first one is... It lights them on fire and does about 100 damage. The next one... I'm guessing that's the one that's, that plays a message? I'll have to show on screen what it looks like from their perspective, but the next one is... They get overdosed. Get the one after that. <laughs> okay, that was the same one, but it was kind of funny. Uh, the <laughs> they go invisible for one of them. I honestly didn't even know what to say because I forgot that one was even a thing. He just kind of disappeared. I was like, wait a second, does the Instaco one happen again? But hopefully we get the last one, which we did. They become frozen. Next up from Kingsley Eden. Everyone's melee does as much knockback as Zenyatta's melee. I couldn't get it exactly, but if you melee someone, or if you get meleeed, uh, you kind of fly. So, obviously I'm getting flown more than that because they're bots, but, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of knock them back. You can knock them off the cliff if you don't get ratioed by a beginner soldier. So we'll try and knock them off the edge. Unfortunately, they kind of out melee me. They have bigger ranges, but... Hopefully we get him off the edge before he dies, and we do. Nice. Next up from Ev is bad. Make everyone blow up like a nuke when they die with friendly fire. So, if I was to kill my soldier friend here, he blows up like a nuke. 
So I added a couple of friends in here, and hopefully they will know that a nuclear bomb will go off soon. So each team is now fighting, and if one of them was to, let's say, die... DIE! A huge bomb will go off! Does this make Overwatch better? I don't know! Next up from that guy 3604 put the Goomba Stomp onto a character. If you jump on somebody's head, they either take damage or die instantly. Unfortunately, I couldn't get it to work with just jumping on their head, so instead I made it so when Lucio ultimates, like last time, I didn't do it high enough. So if we were to try this again, it will just Goomba Stomp him. It is quite gimmicky, and if I use it like literally right next to him, it'll sometimes just kill him but the goomba stomp does work so feel free to try it out from the vessel i think an amazing game mode would be overwatch with random projectiles where each shot does something random or is a random projectile from in-game codes so basically what's saying is let's say i throw this javelin let's say instead of a javelin that's like a mine from junkrat but i can't really do that and there is a game mode that's kind of similar where it has random abilities but we'll get to that later however instead what i did is whenever you shoot someone you'll get a different projectile speed and different damage, so there's a chance that I could do double damage or literally 1% of my damage. Like this one. This one is a lot slower than it should be. It's so slow that the bullets, you can't even see them anymore. And if I was to throw a javelin, it just kind of flops. But if we were to throw it into his face, I mean, it did about average. Let's try it again. That did a little bit more. It's better to show off the damage with someone like Cassidy, so his grenade does around 120 while it insta-killed because it did like 200% damage. However, if we do it again, there's a chance it'll do nothing. Yeah, as you can see, it did less than 120. So basically, random bullet damage. To the point of where it doesn't even two-shot anymore. From Coco Lee, make Overwatch Minecraft. Next from Alex Nice, make a double piston extender in Overwatch. I know my redstone. Next up is E Hong. I don't know if it's possible, but do a game mode where cooldown abilities are randomized. I mentioned this earlier, and I think this was supposed to mean where you randomly get an ability. So if you press E, you'll have some sort of ability that's randomized. As an example, if I press E on Ash instead of Dynamite, I should throw like a translocator or something. Or if I press Shift, I'll start sprinting rather than using Coach Gun. But that would take me a long freaking time. And it's already been done before to a much better extent, and the trailer looks pretty good, so I recommend you go watch that if you are interested. I also think a lot of Overwatch Workshop creators are underrated, so I wanted to show a couple off. But what I can definitely do is make it so the cooldown time's random. So if I use my dynamite, it's normally 12 seconds, and it looks like it actually got 12 seconds. So if I was to coach gun, normally 10, and I got 15 seconds, okay. So I set it so it can either be between 1 and 15, and somehow I get the longest. So we'll try it again. And I got 2, so I immediately can use it again. And I got 8. And then I get 13, of, of course. This is best on longer abilities because it only had the maximum of 15. While absolutely terrible on characters like Doomfist, I'm very sorry. These changes are not Doomfist friendly. Next up, I got two that are kind of similar. Ian McGregor, every bullet causes lasting damage because you're bleeding. And Mint Choco Cookie, a game mode where every shot is realistic, like you would get stunned by Ryan and Widow would make you bleed. So if I shoot this Junkhead over here, he's gonna start bleeding. And you can see his health kind of going down. You can't exactly see it, so I'll try and get shot by him. Um, I did not take enough damage for it because I barely am not. But you can kind of hear him getting hurt, so eventually he'll die. Eventually. Ow. 
There we go. I've replaced the Junkrat with a much more lethal Hanzo, and as you can see, I am bleeding really quickly, and I need to get to a health pack. Luckily, barely surviving it. And as long as you take any healing, you'll stop bleeding. And maybe I should make the bleeding a little more lethal. It's about 4 damage per second. But if I was to get shot again, I'm just going to bleed out and die where I would if there wasn't a health back. But yeah, bleeding in Overwatch. If you take more than 31 damage, you'll start dying. And now for the final change before we go on to the new game modes. Jonah Key, a game where Torbjorn shoots baby Hammonds that squeak whenever they hit a wall. <laughs> when you press your E button, it will shoot out a baby Hammond. And when it hits someone, it will die and explode. I didn't get a very good look at it, so we'll try it again. Take this, you filthy casual. <laughs> I could probably make it look a little nicer, but it definitely works pretty well. But it is now time to move on to the game modes. From Jick123. Make everyone have one health point. So everyone has one health point. That That's all this game mode is. Barriers have no health, apparently. But I'm pretty sure they're still block damage. So if this Hanzo shoots at me... Uh, yeah, I, I can definitely block it, but then I just die again. And as you can see, he has one health point also. Maybe I should play someone a little more efficient. So it's all about getting the first shot in. Literally nothing else, just one shot. Doesn't matter how accurate you are. Doesn't matter how much damage you do, just... You have one health, that's all it is. From the Mr. Myrtle. Next up is 5 buffed bronze versus 5 GMs. Now I am on the bronze side because I have 350 health. I also have reduced cooldowns and I do more damage. So if I was to hypothetically fight this grand master right here... I do quite a bit of damage. I can two-shot him with just body shots. Now, I didn't take a lot of damage because this guy was, you know, buffed also. I took a lot of damage because he's a Grandmaster. So if we are to switch sides, because clearly I am a Grandmaster here. Now let's play Widowmaker, let's say. I'm going to turn on my Grandmastering. So my game sense is so high that I can detect where this bronze is going through walls so if i was to just quick scope in um i missed but remember the overwatch league has like an accuracy of like 20 percent if i remember i can't remember what the statistic is but i'm clearly very good at this game because i am a grandmaster and of course i like looking at where the dead body was but i can always turn it off by pressing f and r while turning it on with f you know I mean, uh, not turning it off. Uh, you know what I mean? I didn't. I don't have aimbot. What are, what are you saying? I'm just really, really good at Widowmaker. That I can, I can hear this. Look, he's going under the ground. What is he doing? This bronze has no idea where the first objective is. If you guys haven't figured out, this is aimbot versus buffed players. So I'm on the aimbot team, also known as Grandmaster team. This guy is a buffed bronze who has no chance against me. What's funny is I actually did play this one for like a good 20 minutes with a friend and we kept switching sides seeing which side was actually the most broken and I still don't know. The only issue is that aimbot doesn't work against some characters like Roadhog for example who can literally just tank your aimbot and also some characters are so short that the aimbot misses no matter what so if you're wanting to play this just know that the aimbot isn't perfect and personally I think if you're good enough you don't really need the aimbot. Because having those extra stats are just better, because as you can see, it's just missing right now. You just have to move and it'll miss. And he can two-shot me with Storm Arrow now. Next up from Pixel, a single Ana with one second, I don't know, pick a number, Sleep Dart versus five Reinhardts in a survival race. So I actually called this one, one Ana Sleep Tag. Hopefully I'll get Ana immediately. I do not. Oh yeah, my shield is smaller. So you got a smaller shield, you got a fire trick that will still two-shot, I'm pretty sure. And you're gonna swing. Of course, I'm gonna block it because I don't want to get slept. You don't want to get slept in this. Uh, they have about a three second cooldown, so luckily you can do it, but you have to be careful for that sleep dart. And if I kill the Ana, then I win. Oh, I missed. Okay, so it's a three second cooldown. I can heal myself. Stop. 
So when I sleep someone, they're slept forever, but one of the Reinhardts can wake him up. Uh, Mr. Reinhardt Nita, can you go to this guy and press R on him? Or hold down R? Or, sorry, hold down your reload button if you're on a console. That's not your reload button. There we go. So it, once you do that, after a couple seconds, he should wake up. There we go. And now he is woken up. However, if I was to sleep all of these Reinhardts, please, please don't kill me. Well, this is what it would look like if they were trying to kill me, of course. So if I was to sleep all of them, I just need one more. Uh, you have this issue of your shield will not save you from this. Okay, yes it will. I got a hit marker. Oh god. So it's, a, it's quite dangerous fighting a Reinhardt. It's kind of a weird thing. Um, I remember Ana being like really overpowered. I don't know how I'm messing up this much. There we go. And when all the Reinhardts are slept, the Ana wins. And whoever kills the Ana wins. Uh, he seems to be in the floor too. <laughs> so this one is from Gisbert Renz, buff Doom versus normal team. So I have this as one Doom versus 11 children because people have that issue. All right, so they're gonna be the quote unquote children and I'm gonna be the Doomfist. So this game mode, I'm not sure how balanced it is. This is one of the ones that I did not even attempt to balance, but I have basically zero cooldown. I have extra health, I have extra everything. And if I wasn't lagging, I can just kind of one shot them. They'll fly quite far. And I don't really think they have a chance against me. We'll even start it just to see what happens. All right, they have a bunch of aimbot bastions, but I still have no faith. Oh god, I'm lagging though. That's, that's one plus, I guess. <laughs> Alright, this is quite fun if you're the Doomfist. Otherwise, it's really not fun. You just kind of have to die. Accept your punishment. Oh my god, there's so many bastions though. But I have so much over health. This is just not fair. <laughs> this is so dumb. Oh my god, you guys, the bastion actually did something. Oh my god! I almost died. Your right. <laughs> HP just disappeared. Never mind. Maybe, maybe this about, maybe this game mode is a little more balanced than I thought. At number twenty, why is this pull seventy three percent, Daddy? Because I am Daddy. Okay, but actually, at number twenty is Russian Roulette. So when you shoot, you have a six or like a sixteen percent chance of dying. All right. So if we try this again, uh, I'll shoot. I did not die. Now it's one of your guys' turn to shoot. Oh, they shot. Oh, and Anita died. Alright, so Big Daddy and Cheerio both have to shoot now. Oh, <laughs> they died. Alright, Cheerio, you have a 1 in 6 chance of dying. There we go. Oh, and they shot again. So when once everyone has shot, you can shoot again. So now both of us need to shoot. Oh, your turn. And I won. So this is just Russian Roulette. When you shoot your gun, uh, there's one less bullet in the chamber. And every six bullets it reset, or if the bullet shoots, it will reset. So basically, just Russian roulette. At number twenty-one from River and Keta, bumper cars where Ryan bumps into each other, and last one alive wins. So I took this in a little bit of a different direction, where instead it's a death match. So you have increased speed, and you'll one shot with your charge. So as you can see, I'm about to nail someone. Oh, never mind, I went off the edge. I added a few extra Reinhardts, but if I was to charge. Or get charged by this Ryanar, it'll insta kill. So it's just bumper cars. I, I love how an AI is beating everyone here. Oh my god, I just got like a triple. There we go! Ryan bumper cars! At number 22, a game mode that is free for all, but every time you die as a hero, you cannot choose them anymore. And once you die with every hero, you have to spectate or something like that. So basically, I made that as hardcore deathmatch, where if you die as a hero, uh, you can't choose them anymore. Uh, yep, that you can just mow me down. And it will send you back here. You can't choose them anymore. And so I have to play a different character. Once all the characters are gone, well, you just gotta spectate. And once you're the last one left, you win. Now I'm not gonna go through them all, but just to show that it still works, criminal can you kill me? And we just keep going until you run out. Next up at number 23 by Zai Nur. Interesting. Overwatch 2, but everyone is Genji and is severely nerfed, like 1 ammo, 20 second cooldown nerf. This will make Overwatch more fun. So this version is kind of cool. When you dash, you go on a 20 second cooldown. But obviously, as you should know, 
when you kill someone at Genji, you get your dash back. So the point is to just constantly keep dashing. So I added a few Genjis for testing purposes. And if I look to kill one, I'll get my dash back. And the goal is to just dash people over and over again and win. And it's just a Genji one-shot deathmatch, basically. Uh, these are AI, so they didn't one-shot me there, but that's okay. And with a bunch of players, I feel like this is going to be a lot of fun, just because when you dash someone, you can instantly dash someone else. So normally there'd be someone else here, but... Unfortunately, the AI don't respawn instantly. But this is ideally how it will play out. It's how I'm playing now. At number 24, we got from the Imperial Avian. One Genshi is allowed to dash with his ultimate, while five tracers run away from him for 10 minutes, and the tracers aren't allowed to attack only with abilities. So that one felt cool and all, but I thought it'd be a little boring. So instead, what happens is... Whoever gets Genji can't win, so they just kind of try and kill everyone. But instead, the last Tracer alive will win. You can hit me, right? Because I just shot you and I couldn't shoot you. You can, you yeah, can sure. here, melee me real quick. Or that, I mean that works. Hey, at least we know it works. Alright, it looks like the Tracers actually cannot kill the Genji for whatever reason, but that works. There we go, I finally got Genji again. Alright, you guys are screwed. Where are you? I think I saw one. There we go. Alright. And then when there's only one tracer left, they win. Next up at number 25 from Gecko Songi, friendly fire map. Ana heals and hurts you. So I think as most of you know, I've already done a friendly fire game mode. This is what it looks like. However, just because of that. I actually have added Life Weaver, so Life Weaver can now work. So if I was to bully a Zelfie here, and then I was to heal him, it'll heal. And it works a little differently because since I can't really detect... The Jess came out the other day. I can't really detect how his healing works. So I just made it so if you click, you do 50 healing. And unfortunately, I also couldn't figure out how his ultimate works because in the Workshop game mode, it doesn't actually detect the tree as using your ultimate for some reason. However, if I was to place this ultimate, life life. it works apparently a little bit for a Zelfie, but as you can see, they're not really taking damage. Uh, Nita, can you shoot me a little bit? Thank you. And as you can see, I'm getting healed from it though. And apparently a Zelfie can shoot my tree also. So Life Weaver kind of works as with all the healers. They don't really work exactly, but that's okay. At number 26 from Vengeful Full Bloon, you guys have some weird names. A game mode with no audio, no abilities, only one person to choose, no abilities to live, and you can't see your screen, just look at pitch black screen. So that one seems a little boring, so instead I made it so it's called Blind Watch. So if I was to choose a hero like Cassidy, I can't see very far in front of me. I can see like the stairs, I can see... Pretty much nothing, can't even see the sky. But if I was to go to the payload, I might find a Zelfie on Reaper. And if I was to find an enemy on the payload somewhere, the payload should be about here, I can barely even tell that they're there. They have to be on the edge of my vision, and if they're right in front of me, I can't even see them even though I can see them. There. That's the bell. There they are. Ow. So this is quite, quite difficult. Blind watch is surely blinding. Oh, there they are. So yeah, I hope you guys have a lot of fun with Blind Watch because I sure can't see anything. Next up from Lucas Brandon, a deathmatch where everyone has one bullet and everyone has selfie and whoever gets the first kill wins. So I took that a little bit differently and I took it like one in the chamber. So you only have one bullet and then once you shoot it, you can't shoot it anymore. And so you have to do damage in order to be able to shoot again. And as you can see, I did increase damage. So criminal, I'm going to shoot you and I get my bullet back. So I can shoot again, but now I can't shoot because I didn't hit anyone. This game mode is basically one in the chamber where if you hit your shot, you can keep shooting, but if you miss, you cannot keep shooting. Now, as of right now, you can still use your secondary and all that, but if you want to change that, all you have to do is turn off the abilities, but for this game mode, you're going to be able to use it just because it's more fun that way, even if it's kind of broken. At number 28, Overwatch Tag and Wrecking Ball Volleyball and Freeze Tag. Now, I've already done Freeze Tag, so instead, I just made Wrecking Ball Volleyball. So the ball will spawn in just a second. The ball will spawn and just... There it is. <laughs> oh, it looks like he missed. So that's my third. 
And this is volleyball. Kinda nice. Uh, I'm gonna see if I can get a hit in before whatever. It may need to be a little faster because this is kind of a little too easy to hit. Especially because he just goes so high. So let's try and mess him up. And the ball will not die. Oh, there we go. Alright. Five minutes of criminal, criminal getting owned. This is going in, by the way. Like, we just started playing this game mode rather than actually oh, doing no. the rest of them. <laughs> From two Cheez-Its. Make poker, please. I love gambling and I can't gamble in Overwatch 2. And finally, at number 30, from Locky McAndrew, a game mode which has Thomas the Tank Engine and also Subway Surfers, or maybe just Subway Surfers. A while ago, I found this game mode, this is the only one I did not make, where it's Thomas the Tank Engine. So if we start this game mode up, wow. hey. Fight. Hey. <laughs> you better watch out. Yeah, criminal uh, Thomas is gonna come for you in about 12 seconds. You better watch out. You better run. <laughs> I hate the show. <laughs> hey, hey, turn around, Colonel. <laughs> How do I? Oh God. <gasps> wait, wait, wait. Chugga, 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 chugga. Oh my God! Oh, I think I it's, it's actually hard. Wait. Chugga, 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 chugga. Oh, you killed me on the edge. So that was 30 game modes, all in the Overwatch Workshop, that I created, with the exception of the last one. I did not create that one. Um, I'll try and put a code on screen, or the original video, but if I can't find it, then I'll put a code that I have of the save. However, before we go, there was actually going to be 50 of them, but knowing that it took me this long just to make 30 changes, or 29 I should say, here are the honorable mentions and why I was going to do them, but why I ended up cutting them out of the video. First up was Infection. The reason I didn't include Infection was simply because some other people have already done it. So here's a Zombies mode where if you get killed by Reaper, you'll turn into a zombie and your goal is just to survive. And then from the same person, Circ and Destroy. I really wanted to do these two because I thought it'd be funny to go Infection, Circ and Destroy. But like I said, that would have taken me a really long time just to make two complete game modes and make them work really, really well. Next up from Moonblast, every time any hero misses a shot, they take half of the current HP, round it up, they will never die. This one I just ended up not doing because I had a lot of those that were very simple that no one would really play. And I also had one in the chamber already, so I decided to do one in the chamber over this one. But I was going to do them both, I just didn't. Next up was 2 versus 2 versus 2 versus 2 versus 2, and make a game mode with 3 teams, I dare you. Since I already have the technology to do this due to my free-for-all game mode, I could have definitely done it, but it was kind of boring to do. And this would have taken me a while to sort out and make work completely. I would have also had to test it, and I just didn't have the time or people to do it, so I just didn't. That's pretty much the reason I don't do a lot of these. Overwatch turn-based fighting game, didn't do because I don't have time. Dating sim in Overwatch with all heroes, again, you can kind of already find that with Tinder Watch. Some Elden Ring style map or mode with a boss fight with unique abilities for bosses. This one seems cool, I just don't really think it's going to be super interesting because you already have like one daddy versus 11 kids. I mean, I could literally just go into custom game and where is it? Yeah, one dad versus 11 kids, like you can already find that. And then there was actually some interesting ones like Workshop where everything is lore based. A game mode where the rules are not based on which team you're on, but instead like what faction they're in. And then finally a battle map where one team is Talon and one team is Overwatch. The last one is kind of simple, you can kind of just do that yourself, where you can go into the hero roster and then go team one and then turn it off and just say, oh, Overwatch, Ana, Baptiste, uh, Bastion, Brigitte, Cassidy, it's kind of simple. And then go to team two, just go, oh, all of them off, and go, oh, Reaper, um, Sombra. So it's not going to be too hard, I think I click Soldier instead of Sombra. So that one's kind of simple, and then making all the interactions may just take a while, and not really sure if people are going to play it, so that would be something I would do later down the line, though. Just for the fun of it and like a realism change. We had Geometry Dash. I thought about it. It would have just taken me a long time. Overwatch Battle Royale. This one I might do in the future, honestly, just for the fun of it, where depending on what item you pick up depends on what hero you have. I think that'd be pretty cool. Everyone is buffed to me except for like one person. That one I just didn't have any creative ideas for, so I didn't do it. Make a Sonic map. 
that one seemed kind of fun. It was kind of like just a racing map. I just didn't do it because I wasn't super interested in doing it. And then finally, Mini Fight Club. I wasn't confident what to do about it. It was kind of one of those that are gimmicky, kind of like the freeze tag and the one dash. I voice cracked really hard there, but I mostly just didn't really want to do it because uh, the biggest thing that I would be doing is not really the actual fighting, but the score system where it like, keeps track of the score, keeps track of who's fighting. I just didn't want to do that, so that's why I didn't do it. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys enjoyed all the game modes that were there and the 15 changes at the beginning. If you guys find a glitch in one of them, I'm not confident I'm going to update it. However, maybe I will. I'm thinking about making the volleyball into a really, really good one. I may also keep a couple of them, like the freeze tag and maybe the one Genji dash to do for like a tournament or something where we just go through every game mode and see who can win. I don't know, there's a lot of things I can do now that I have all these game modes. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed. Like and subscribe. And I will see you all later. And thank you for 10,000 subscribers because I forgot to mention that earlier, I'm pretty sure. That was the whole reason I did all this. It took me a week or two. To be fair, I had COVID during one week, so that's why. But anyways, see you guys later.